Hey everyone, happy Halloween and welcome to a very special, well not really, episode of In the Studio with Brad. Uh, I'm sure some of you have better things to be doing on a on this most uh, gamerly important, you know, Monday night. But thank you, those of you who are talk, showing up uh, for joining us. I will try to make your evening entertaining. I was going to do try and do all my monologue in a Tales from the Crypt voice, but uh, then I came to my senses. I also had the bright idea. It's like, oh, it'd be cool if I could go to Party City and get like a pair of like the weird gloves. And that's like, yeah, right. No. So you got to put up with the. Uh, I should have like splashed some green paint or something on my hands. Oh, too late to worry about it, eh? There's always next year. You know, that would be what, like, in the studio with Brad season five. God help us all. So, okay, so what are we, oh, I forgot. What all do I, I don't think I have much of anything to show new for this week. Um, I did finish this piece that I had started last week. Uh, posted it on my social media and I, the number of people who say they absolutely love this picture is very gratifying. The one person commented that it's like, this makes me want to pull out my sword and uh, and, and torch and go uh, adventuring. So there's that. That unfortunately is about all, all I have. I have this picture. I'm not sure how well you can see it. Can you see it a little, little bit better that way? Okay. Oh, mm -hmm. got to get the lights up going right here. There we go. How's that? No. Yeah, no kidding. Okay. I'm still uh, working with this new setup for, with the camera and the uh, mic. So, you know, you're just going to have to live with it, guys. I am about as mechanically uh, inclined as a possum or maybe a raccoon, but I'm doing my best. So what are we working on today? Uh, this will be in the next issue of Tales from the Magician Skull. I believe, actually, no. I would say this is maybe like number 11. Brad, uh, before you go too far, you didn't move your camera back. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> there we go, folks. Sorry about that. So this is for an upcoming issue of Tales from the Magician's Skull for a story bound in brass and lint and iron. Uh, I think I mentioned it last week that this is like a real classic, like Michael Moorcock Eternal Champion vignette. But I finally got the brain power going to really crank on it. Believe it or not, all this work, all the ink work so far today, and I will turn so you can see it a little bit better, has been done so far today. I've got the basic big block shapes. Now I get to go in and st start working on the shading and lighting and all the textures. So that's what we're going to do for the next couple, couple hours. Don't forget, folks, we have all sorts of horrible, horrible jokes and fun Halloween facts. So redeem those points. Don't forget to uh, sign up for the drawing at the end of the season, which I believe is, this is episode six. So we'll have like four more episodes going into basically early December. And then we will be taking a hiatus so that we can have some with, I believe you're going to do basically more stuff with Chris Arneson, correct? Uh, yes, sir. It should be Chris Arneson right after you again. Okay. I've been trying to get Peter Mullen to, to bite the bullet and get better internet, but he won't bite. Yeah. Uh, well, he's <laughs> a, oh, isn't he a school teacher in his daily life? So 
he probably I... doesn't really feel like having to talk very much in his off hours, too. No, that's fair. Yeah. Also, you already have a redemption uh, okay. for Random Joker Fact. Mm, I wonder who it could possibly be coming from. Hold on one second. The world may never know. Yeah, right. Yes, sir. Okay, well, here we go. This is a big one, so I'm guessing it's eight pack. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, apart from common modern alternatives to the celebration of Halloween, the holiday also takes many other names. Other terms for Halloween include Witch's Night, Lamb's Wool, Snap Apple Night, Samhain, and Summer's End. And if you're in the Detroit area, it's Devil's Night. So. Yeah, it was kind of neat. Uh, I was watching a documentary on Halloween on, I believe it was the Discovery Channel one day. Okay. No big, terribly big deal there. But uh, they had uh, Professor Jack Santini from Bowling Green State University's uh, pop culture. And I'm like, uh, what's Dr. Santini doing on TV? So, I thought that was kind of cool to have a local celebrity here. Oh, speaking of such things, folks, remember to start be sharing your uh, your own ghost stories anything creepy that's ever happened to you. Let's hear some great stuff, okay? As I recall, I was going to tell you about the haunted Carmen Gia that once followed me. Anybody wanna hear that story? You're going to have to speak up because uh, I don't get to actually see the stream, so. Well, I want to hear it. Okay. Spoiler alert, folks. She, she heard it last week, but I'll, I'll be glad to share it again. Okay? It's a really good story, though. Yeah. This is one of those what stories. This actually happened to me around 1984. I was living in a towny, tiny town in eastern Ohio called Lisbon, Lisbon. You can look it up on the map if you want. It's one of the oldest towns in Ohio. And one of the streets in Lisbon is Pritchard Avenue. No terribly big deal. At the time, I had a paper route for the Salem, Ohio, the Salem News. It was a you know, lo local newspaper. Well, just because sometimes doing that kind of stuff can get kind of boring, I would alter, you know, the my delivery route. You know, as long as the, the stuff gets to the uh, customers, hey, you know. So, on this Pritchard Avenue, and I have to describe the way Pritchard Avenue actually was laid out. First off, any of you who know the far eastern part of Ohio knows it's very, very hilly. It's uh, basically at the beginning of the Appalachian Mountains. So, and Lisbon is basically built in a valley, which is really nice if the snow, snow and wind happens to be blowing across. Not so good when it's you know, if it happens to be snowing, doink, down across, down the length of the valley. But that's that's actually not very important to this story because this happened in, I want to say late July, late August or so. Yep, it's been many, many years. So I don't remember the exact details anymore. What is more important is that uh, Pritchard Avenue is on a hill, and it's a fairly steep hill. 
I mean, there's a part of the hill that I swear is about a 20 degree angle, which if you think about, it, that's a really, really steep. But weird thing, the sidewalk, can you, can you see this? Okay, hold on. I'm going to move. Better? Okay, so Pritchard Avenue is kind of strange. The sidewalk is really built up, and then, then there's kind of a ditch, and then there's the road itself, okay? So basically, if you're on the sidewalk, you can really see down onto the street pretty significantly. With me so far, no big deal, right? I mean, it's, it's an old street, and you can tell that this is the way it was built probably 150 years ago, and they've never really completely rede redesigned it. It would be too much of a pain in the tukas. So, and, okay, here's the street. And here is the house of the Pastor family. They were friends of the family, okay? Now, interesting detail, Joey and Tom always said that their house was haunted. Uh-huh, sure, guys, right. Um, Joey, I know how you drink. The only thing you're haunted by is pink albums. But, so, I finished my route early one day, and I just decided to take Pritchard Avenue back down to my, back to my house. So, here I am. See? And here's my, here's even my, you know, now empty bag of papers. I'm walking down, do, 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 do. I have no clue what I was thinking about at the time. I was probably thinking of either trying to catch some of the after-school cartoons, maybe doing any homework that I had. No, wait a minute. No, it would have been just the uh, because school wasn't in yet. So I was just hurrying home to try and catch uh, probably some of the late afternoon cartoons and such. And here is... Joey Pastor's little uh, convertible, um, I would say it was like a little Carmen Ghia or something, some little sports car kind of thing, about two feet off the ground. You know, nice little car. You know, the Pastor's were not rich, but they weren't poor. You know, you could tell this thing, and this thing was the light of his life. So it's parked out in front of his house. Big bragging deal, right guys? So do 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 do. Oh, there's Jerry's car. Do, 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 do. And as I passed his car, it started following me. Now mind you, the top was down. And I am at an elevation where I can look over and see there's no one in the car. And it's low enough to the ground that no one could be like kind of hiding, you know, in the in the uh, side or anything. The car was empty. So I'm walking along and I'm seeing this car keeping pace with me. You know, it's not like it suddenly slipped out of a, you know, park at West Jung down the street. I mean, I was walking a fairly standard, like I don't really have anywhere I need to go kind of pace. And it was following me at exactly that pace. So that went on for about, oh, 15, 20 feet. And uh, I stopped. And the car stopped. Okay. And I started walking again. And the car followed me for about another 10, 15 feet before it stopped. <laughs> and I finished walking home, and my mom was out in the kitchen, and she's like, uh, Mom, you're not going to believe what just happened. So, if any of you in the audience can come up with a rational explanation for this, and mind you, this was like 1984, so... 
there was no, you know, remote controls or anything like that yet. And there was no way anybody could have been hiding on this far side of the car. Because like I said, I was far up enough that I would have seen anyone crouching on the other side of the car. So now here's the here's the kind of the funny addendum to the to that. Many, many years later, um, I'm listening to a local, sadly short-lived classic rock station out of Findlay, Ohio, and they had a medium coming in to the station to talk. And the medium was taking questions and offering sage advice from beyond the grave, you know, that kind of <clears throat> rhymes with bull sheep, okay? So the person ahead of me, I, I decided to call in and they put me on hold. Do, 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 do. So I'm listening to him. And the person ahead of me was talking about how he had a mustard stain on his jeans. And he wanted to know if that was his father reaching out to communicate to him from beyond the grave. A mustard stain. It's like, was your dad like a big mustard fan, maybe? I'm not really sure. I, yeah, maybe, maybe. I'm not much of a believer in the occult anyhow, and I'm pretty sure even if I were, I don't think my uh, belief systems would be flexible enough to include mystical mustard stains. So, I get on the phone, you know, and they're, they're like, so, Reader, you know, tell us your story. Do, 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 do. So I tell the story to while well, the psychic is listening here. And I finish, and they're like, uh, 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 maybe it was having transmission problems and slipping in and out of gear. Which, it's like, great, I think I just broke the psychic. So, anyhow, if any of you have a sane explanation, and it's been literally 40-some years since this happened, and I have yet to come up with an explanation that it was not even more far-fetched than the ghost, the car was haunted. So, there you go, guys. That's my story. Anybody anybody care to, to uh, offer an opinion? Well, my opinion from, and we, we debunked it already because it's basically nigh impossible for this to happen. But my opinion when he told me this story last week was that maybe someone was behind the car pushing it to and just like low enough where you couldn't see them. But I have a hard time believing that someone could push an 80s car or 70s car depending on what it, you know, what year it was because those things were basically just steel. And um, remember this this was a little sports car so and it was tiny. Fair. You know, yeah, and I mean, Joey was pretty average height, so was his girlfriend. And God knows, Sarah Kupka, that was the girlfriend, was a smart aleck. I can see her if they had figured, been able to do it pulling a prank like this, but how would they have been able to arrange it that fast, that perfectly, too, and that perfect. keep pace with you? And stop when you stopped. It's like nigh impossible for that to occur. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, not only, oh yeah, it just occurred to me. I mentioned it to Joey several years later. And he was baffled too. Now he was, I, and this was long enough, long ago after that, you know, there'd have been no sense in keeping the prank going. You know, you know, what, what, you know, is like, you what? It, <laughs> you know, Scouts Honors, 
dude. You know, your car followed me one day. Okay, whatever. So I don't think it was, so I, sorry, I had forgotten that detail for, till just a moment ago. But for the most part, folks, in spite of what I draw for a living, I'm actually pretty hard headed. I mean, you got to really come up with something amazing before I'll start going like, okay, you know. Do, do, do. So Jess has a story that she shared in chat. Mm -hmm. um, she had a weird encounter, encounter on Halloween night about 12 or 13 years ago. Mm -hmm. She was coming home from her mother's house and decided to go down one of the side roads to get back to Bowling Green. Green she... Road. Okay. Um, where was I? Oh, uh, as she approached the stop sign, she saw a man dressed in an army uniform and a woman in a bridal gown. Mm -hmm. Although she couldn't see their feet, which that's creepy in and of itself, um, she, as she went past where she saw them in the car, it dropped about like 10 degrees, so like you would be able to see someone's feet on the ground, I suppose. But mm -hmm. as she got to that stop sign, uh, she looked in the mirror, and they were just not there. Yeah. Um, Weird. Also relevant detail. It's far enough where she saw them is far enough out of town people would not just be taking a stroll at that time of night i mean it was like 12 30 1 o'clock at 12 30 or so at night you know on i want to say it was like a thursday night or so and like i said i mean it was like it's a good two three miles outside of town so no one in their right mind would be just you know taking a midnight stroll let alone dressed in such garb that's weird <laughs> yeah. excuse me folks Sorry, my sinuses suddenly about maybe half an hour ago suddenly decided they wanted to start going haywire. So you're just going to have to put up with me sniffling occasion for the next couple of hours. But the Bowling Green, Ohio area has its impressive number of supposed ghosts, including Amanda, the ghost of the local Chi Omega sorority house. Hold on, guys. I got a little bit of So you might want to cover your ears. Uh -huh. oh. It was utterly charming, but the local Chi Omega sorority house is supposedly haunted by the ghost of a girl named Amanda. Now, normally you would think, okay, but the sisters of Chi Omega not only accept the fact that their house is haunted, they welcome it. Yeah. Like, in the, uh, usually when they do, like, a group shot, you know, that you have the thing of the group shot of, you know, like, all the little vignettes of the current members, they always leave one one whole empty for Amanda. Somewhat less charming is the ghost of the local, the one local uh, <clears throat> educational building that supposedly, at least this is the story I have been told multiple times, the janitorial staff is so scared of this ghost that they will not clean the building after dark. 
they do, especially like the second floor, they get all their stuff done before, you know, the before dusk. So that's a little bit on the bizarre side. And you can look it up. It's Schatzel Hall, S-H-A-T-Z-E-L Hall, Bowling Green State University. You can also look up Amanda Kai Omega if you want. I'm just kind of wondering, since they tore down the old sorority house, whether Amanda, you know, migrated with them to the new sorority row, row or not. And my old uh, university dormitory was supposedly haunted by the ghost of the founder. That's one of the fun things about going to it, attending a slightly older university. We have bukus of ghost stories. Matter of fact, uh, one of my friends actually went as the ghost of uh, Alice Prout for Halloween one year. <clears throat> Okay, any other fun stories that people are sharing? Uh, not at the moment, um, but I do have a story from Charleston that I could tell. Okay. So, um, I'm sure everybody knows that Charleston is one of the, is probably one of the most haunted, you know, towns. Uh, especially Civil War towns in uh, America, other than Gettysburg and Savannah. Um, mm -hmm. Oh God, Savannah! I guess you, you know, at least according to the stories, you can't walk three, three feet without walking through a ghost. Yeah, stayed in a bed and breakfast in Savannah once. That was a really creepy experience. Very hard to sleep at night. Um, <laughs> But staying in Charleston, um, we just stayed at a normal hotel. We didn't do any kind of fancy bed and breakfast or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But we did go on a ghost tour. Okay. And nothing really that, like, happened on the ghost tour. Uh, okay. I was just talking about all the stories and whatnot. But mm -hmm. my friend, who is very sensitive to uh, paranormal things, she felt this weird presence um, in the area where supposedly the gallows were. Um, mm. in Charleston. So we decided after the ghost tour ended, we got some dinner and we went to go check it out. Well, my friend who was, I don't know if he still is, but he was a very, very devout Christian was basically like, I'm going to challenge you because I don't believe in spirits. There's no such thing as spirits. There's only angels and demons. And if something's here, it has to be one of the two. So he was basically being an idiot in my words. <laughs> Um, so he walked around inviting this presence to show itself and, you know, come to me, like, show yourself to me, you know, he's walking around on his own over on one part of the park, and my, my medium friend and I and my boyfriend at the time were all, like, walking around taking pictures, just, like, trying to reach out in a more respectful way, I guess you could say. And yeah, it's like, if you want to show up, or man, or or let us know you're here. That's cool. Otherwise, uh, have a good evening. Have good life. After life, whatever. <laughs> yeah, whatever. basically, basically. So I got some weird pictures that I can't explain. Um, which I wish that I knew what flash drive they were on because they have been lost to time now. But I took mm. some really weird pictures that I cannot explain for the life of me. In uh, in that area, they were like. So, I don't normally believe in the whole orb concept because there's mm -hmm. so many factors to why an orb would be in a in a video or a photo. Mainly Including dust or bugs. Or just, you know, flaws in the film. Yeah, exactly. But this was digital, so I know for a fact that it wasn't a film issue. This was like, right. unless something got on the lens, nothing could have messed this thing up the way it did. But I took right. two pictures back to back because I always take like multiple in the same area as right. proof because that's what you should do in the scientific method is you constantly test it. 
Mm-hmm. So I'm taking photos in the same spot over and over and over again. Maybe just because of the shake of my hand or something, it would be off by maybe a fraction of an inch. But right. all of it would be in the same general area. Well, I took a photo right. of a statue and this is while I can hear my friend chanting in the background, like, show yourself to me, blah, blah, blah. You don't, you're not real. My God will, like, my God will banish you, blah, blah, blah. He's, like, off in the distance saying all this stuff. And, like, I'm taking po- photos back to back to back. And the only thing I can describe as an orb showed up because I was not looking at a light source. It was not a lens flare. It was not dust. It was not a bug that I've ever seen. There mm. was, like, this statue that I was taking a picture of had it was one photo it looked you could just see the statue the next photo it was like this big like circle or almost like around the i can't remember if it was a horse or his hand or something it was a civil war statue obviously so it's like this guy in a civil war garb oh and yeah god knows we we saw only about three million of those last time we were in gettysburg <laughs> yeah so like he i can't remember if he was on a horse or if he was just standing there but like there was like this orb around part of it and then literally the next photo it looked just like the first photo so it just showed up in like that one frame and i had mm-hmm. no idea how or why um but shortly after that my friend uh the medium she got really nervous and she was freaking out like she was like we need to leave something this just doesn't feel right and this was like within minutes of me taking those photos and i'm like yeah okay i'm good with that like i started reviewing the photos and i'm like oh that's weird i showed it to her and she's like hmm that could be a manifestation not sure though but we should leave (laughs) so we gathered the rest of the group so it was like five of us and we gathered the rest of the group and we had to drag i'm not kidding we had to drag my friend out he was almost kicking and screaming and like we had to arm lock him like uh our two like we had two guys in the group it was Mm -hmm. him it was him um my boyfriend at the time and then it was like me and and uh, my medium friend were like locking arms with him and shoving him from behind to get him out of the park. He would not go. And it, oh. and he started acting really strange. He's a terrible actor and a horrible liar. So let me just okay. throw that out there. So he's not joking around. Like he's kicking and screaming. He's refusing to leave. He's acting like he's drunk. And he's, like, slurring his words back and forth, like, saying really weird things. I can't really remember what they were, but I remember they were unsettling. It was, like, something like, no, I can't leave. Someone's waiting for me. Or something along the lines of, like, I was supposed to meet them here. Or something weird like that. It was really bizarre. So it took him, we dragged him for two blocks away from this, uh, from this place. And he, like... He kind of went a little limp and confused, and he's like, why are you guys dragging me? Like, what's happening? And we're like, dude, you were, like, acting drunk. And all of us, this was senior, like, our senior trip after we just graduated, so it's not like we could have bought alcohol. We were all, like, 18. Right. So none of us were drinking. We didn't bring booze from, like, our houses before we left. Nothing. Right. And we're all telling him the story, and he's like, I... I don't know what you're talking about. I don't remember saying any of that. I remember, he was like, I remember calling out to the spirit, but I don't remember anything else. And so, to wrap this story up, I'll give you the background of that gallow spot. It was where the supposed or the the first known female serial killer in America oh, was hanged. Sure. Mm. I forget I forget her name because every time I look this up I always just forget her name. But it's she she's basically the story that you hear about where she's up on the gallows, they ask her her last word, she looks dead at the at the spectators and says if there's uh, a if there's something you want to tell the devil, tell me oh, now I... and I'll right. send it to him and then she jumps to her death. That's right, I had forgotten about that story. Yeah, so she was known, um, her and her husband were known to basically kind of like a Sweeney Todd story, you know. They would drug their, uh, their victims that would stay at their bed and breakfast. They would drug their victims, ask them, you know, are you, is someone waiting for you? Are you on a trip? Are you, is someone expecting you? 
if they said no, they'd drug them uh, and torture them and kill them. Lovely. Hmm. So we think that it manifested in our friend uh, the the drug effect and mm -hmm. like the fact that he wouldn't leave because why would you leave? You know, the hospitality kind of thing. So it freaked us all out. <laughs> hmm. That would be a little bit on the creepy side. Yeah. <laughs> Lavinia Fisher. Thank you, Jess. That's her name. The queen of Google flu, by the way. I'm appreciative of it, because if I would have tried to look it up while I was I was talking, it, you would have heard... So... Oh. Speaking of Jess, um, this goes out to any of the listeners that were in uh, attendance at GameholeCon last week. Uh, thank you for those of you who signed the Get Well cards from, for Jess. It was greatly, greatly appreciated. Okay. Under normal circumstances, I'd probably make something snidey, snarky, but the simple fact was it was greatly appreciated. And anybody who wonders why I do love working with the Goodman Games family, that's it in a nutshell. I don't think I have ever heard of a company sending employees like that get well cards. So, yeah. Also, speaking of Jess, uh, we have a random joker fact redemption okay give me just a second just let me finish this last little bit here okay this is short so it's probably a joke so be prepared and not in a lion king kind of way or maybe not here we go oh here we go trick-or-treating was banned during the 1940s due to a shortage of sugar rations. Hmm. Did not know that. Just one more reason to hate the Nazi party, you know? Yep. You know, you cause a world war, you know, nine million deaths and you caused the cancellation of halloween i i cannot forgive you for that that would have made me just riot yeah mainly because living in germany at that time you kind of knew something weird was going on but at the same time you had no choice yeah If I remember correctly, there is actually a Broadway play called, I believe just called Good, that deals with the, and how did you people not notice what was going on, you know, sometimes only a few miles away outside of, you know, like the town, the town closest to Auschwitz, you know, did you never notice the stench? From what... From what I understand, looking it up throughout history, is during the early days, you know, the the early, um, I guess I'll call it the exile, for lack of a better mm -hmm. word, and to make it TOS safe, <laughs> um, right. the, the mass exile was not necessarily fully egged on, because there were people who helped hide uh, victims and things mm -hmm. like that. But there were people who were super compliant with it, that were okay with it, that knew that knew that it wasn't really the right thing, but they th they were so convinced that it was for the betterment of the country that they went along with it. Yeah. And then there's also the fact that, um, unfortunately, a very charismatic person can become a leader mm -hmm. by just a few words no matter how crazy the words were and yeah. 
it's, let's just put it this way, it's definitely a testament of be wary who you vote for and pay attention to what they're saying. If it's too good to be true, you're yeah. dang right it's too good to be true. Mm-hmm. But let's not turn this into a a political screed about a certain uh, madman w with a with a bright orange toupee, you know. <laughs> I mean, I have no clue who I'm talking about, you know. No, I I don't either. Anybody who follows me on social media knows exactly what my political leanings are. And I am unapologetic about it to anyone. Do, 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 do. But we are not here to talk politics. We're here to talk, especially tonight, about ghost stories and such. Anything, any other stories popping up? to do uh not yet no oh come on guys you can do better than this is there hmm is okay one are you curious about haunted places um no because i have had too many friends who Claim to have lived in haunted houses, and that's like, do you ever have any actual proof? But, you know, and this is going to sound really, really silly. Other than the case of what is it, like 16 Kensington Place in England, I don't remember the exact address. Um, there's never been any stories, and I've read literally hundreds of ghost stories o over the course of my life where the ghosts did actually did anything you know they walk they walk around do 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 you know oh i'm carrying my head okay that's nice are you doing anything with your head no i'm just walking around with you know so i mean if you kind of go into it like they're probably not gonna hurt me it kind of takes a lot of the oomph of a haunted house out you know i mean i remember reading about the house from uh, do, 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 amityville you know the house in amityville well i read an article about a guy that actually lived only about five houses down from the house okay i mean he grew up there you know, he grew up in Amityville, in Amity. Uh, he said, hey, whenever I was going to the swimming pool, I rode right by it. It wasn't, no, 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 it wasn't quite, it was like, but it was like maybe a block, two blocks away. So, you know, um, there had never been any stories about anything happening at that house. And do you know how little kids accumulate ghost stories yay or nay so if there was any indication that that house was haunted this kid would have known about it nothing also the fact that the current owners of that house have never reported anything other than more tourists oh god again no manifestations no demonic pigs no flies no blood running down the walls the only thing they're haunted by are tourists coming by looking for the haunted house and the 16 kensington that i was just mentioning that's in london last time i heard it was uh, someone had bought it and it was like a CPA's office. Guess how many weird, horrific manifestations have shown up while it's been 
than a an office building. None. Bingo. <laughs> so what? The they just decided like, oh, Melvin the law, Melvin the CPA's, you know, on duty. Oh, he's just not worth the effort of haunting. Yeah, exactly. It's like, you know, and that and that building that I was listing has actually supposedly, actually had a people, couple people try to commit suicide to get away from the ghost. But now, nothing. Yeah. You know, it's being haunted by an audit, by a uh, lengthy audit, maybe. Yeah. So, you can ask, yes, I can get very hard-headed when it comes to that kind of stuff. No, that's fair. Um, Judge Hitmore in the chat has joined us and said that uh, they used to work in a haunted restaurant. So, I'm, oh, cool. I'm curious, do you have any stories? Yes, I am very interested in hearing stories. Yes. And especially if you can kind of back it up with any any sort of details that I can't go like, uh-huh. Well, another reason why I get kind of hard-headed, I've had a couple people who are like, um, you're just way too credulous. I kid you not. <laughs> I used to work with a girl that lived in one of the largest dorms at Bowling Green State University, okay? Mm -hmm. Needless to say, she had a roommate. Boom. You know, what a shock, you know? You're, what, a freshman in college? Of course you're going to have a roommate. So one day she came home, and some of her stuff had been moved. Okay, and? Well, it's obvious my room is haunted. Jen, it's called You Have a Roommate. You know? That just sounds like you have a roommate with no sense of boundaries. <laughs> yes, that was kind of my thought. <laughs> yeah, like, I think, so there are some things that I believe are 100% you can logically explain it away. Fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. I would argue that probably 90% of, you know, haunted occurrences are that way. Mm-hmm. But the reason why I'm such a staunch believer is I've just seen enough crap. <laughs> I've just seen enough crap and felt enough things and heard enough things that I cannot explain. And right. if I try to explain it, it makes me sound like I'm crazy. So... <laughs> yeah, that's, well, it's kind of like the Occam's Razor. It's like, okay, which is the crazier? You know, what? You know, it's like... Well, okay, like, you know, the uh, me psychic on that radio said, like, maybe it was falling in and out of gear at precisely the moments that I was walking. The odds of that are almost higher than the car was haunted. I mean, if it had slipped out of gear and gone, do -do 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 and down the rest of the slope of Rick, Richard Street would be like, oops, oh, this is going to be a mess when this thing rolls, you know, starts rolling across East Lincoln Way. But it didn't happen. So Judge Hitmore said that uh, while they were working in the restaurant um, on an overnight deep cleaning shift, they heard okay. giggles in another part of the kitchen, ran into that next room and there wasn't anybody there. Do, 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 do. Yeah, that's the one that's the ones that always freak me out the most. Like you're not in any danger, but it's just weird mm -hmm. like to hear voices when nobody's there. Um those are the moments where I found myself feeling a little insane because I remember um so I worked I worked during the pandemic at Dick's Sporting Goods. Mm -hmm. And there has been no stories. I'm going to tell you this right now. There have been, like, no stories, um, barring maybe one, about anything on that plot of land where the Dick's Sporting Goods is. Like, that strip mall or nothing. There's, like, 
yeah, zero, but... like maybe one instance that's a rumor and not even a fact. It when it was a Lowe's, apparently somebody got crushed underneath something heavy or fell from one of the like cranes or something and busted his head open like that was that's like the rumor that you know the place is haunted be after somebody died in the lows that was there but yeah because i've been by that dicks it's a it's a very generic plot of land yeah yeah exactly um and so there, like there's there's little to nothing to do with that area at all on lincoln highway and i when i was working <laughs> When I was working there during the pandemic, the doors were closed, but we were taking online orders still. So all of the managers were still there. Um, so like myself, the store manager, uh, the shoe the shoe store manager, the assistant manager, and the and one other the shipping and receiving manager. We were all there, and we were the only ones that were working at any point in time. It used to be all of us, and then it started being two man shifts. And I remember. <laughs> I was working um, by myself because the store manager was a prick. <laughs> Sorry, not family friendly, but there's no other way to put put him. But he, um, so he would disappear into the office claiming to do emails. And I would find him, I would find him on his phone watching sports while I was working by myself no, on like 350 orders. <laughs> Gosh, what a yeah. shock. It was great. I don't know what you're talking about. I got my crap done fast, though. I was efficient. <laughs> I was efficient mm -hmm. in shipping and receiving. Um, Think of it this way. Sometimes when you have a coworker like that, it's it more slows you down than anything else because you're having to work around them. Oh, 100%. Every time. So the only time he would ever leave the office um, mm -hmm. and off of his butt was to... He, he took over the owl hand... You know, because we still did the uh, buy online, pick up in store while we were okay. closed. So he took care of all of that, but I was working by myself, co uh, collecting the items, packing them, and putting them where they go for FedEx to pick them up. Well, when <laughs> when that was happening, he was we were on a shift together. He was in the office. It was probably like, I don't know, we closed at six on those days like we would have mm -hmm. like four hour shifts so right. we would be like open really early in the morning and then stay uh until like six or seven or whatever so it was right. probably like four or five in the afternoon not ghost hours mind yeah. you because that's normally middle of the night right but i'm sitting well, in go ahead well kind of like the car mcgee it's like it was freaking 4 30 in the afternoon yeah it's like really weird so those ghost hours that people talk about that's full of crap um like but, what they keep it they, they keep a schedule mm -hmm. yeah right oh it's eight o'clock time to start haunting right exactly when's but, my coffee break oh wait i don't have a body <laughs> to drink i guess i'm not <laughs> coffee anymore but i remember i remember i was working and it was like three or four in the afternoon and i i was watching incidentally maybe this is partially mind over matter kind of issue but i was like listening to some podcast or something and it was like telling a a story it was like a it was a kind of like a scary story to tell in the dark kind of thing oh, but okay. it wasn't necessarily scary or anything that was going on but it was a voice that i was hearing and so while i was packing i started hearing someone else's voice and i remember i like paused my video or podcast or whatever it was and i turned around thinking that uh my boss was going to be behind me he wasn't there and mm. it was total silence and i'm like hello somebody there and I just stood there for a couple of minutes, and then I started hearing voices again. And it started coming, it was coming from the uh, uh, sports and rec area. So it was like where the, the baseball bats and, and softballs and stuff were. And I walked over there, and I kept like, it was creeping me out because... W when we were working, all of the lights were off. They were just like the emergency lights or the burglar lights, you know, the right. very minimal, like, just very minimal lighting that you can have in the building where you're not blind and it supposedly looks like you're you're there, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm walking Well, they're trying, they're trying to save on electricity because, you know, buildings like that are probably expensive to light. 
Yes. And especially if there's only like two people there. Yeah, so the lighting is creepy. The only windows in the place are the big front doors. Like, that's mm -hmm. it. That's the only windows you got in the whole building. So it's obviously, like, dark and creepy in this corner, so that's freaking me out. But I go over there, and I, like, stand in that corner, and I thought, because I was trying to figure out where this sound was coming from, I thought it was the store next to us, but I've literally never heard a peep. And I've worked, I've worked the 4 a.m. shifts to, like, you know, when other stores are opening, working, receiving before. I've worked those early hours where, yeah. you know, the store next door doesn't cut their lights and music on until, you know, whenever. But it was so, it, the voices were so inconsistent that I, mm. I was like there's no way this is a radio that i'm hearing and there is no way i've i've tested it as well there's no way you can hear anything coming from the office so it wasn't like i was hearing my boss's like video of sports or whatever right. that he was watching on the computer you can't hear anything either in or out of the office ever mm. so that was that's the weirdest experience i've had at that dick sporting goods um yeah. Or in a store in general. But, like, there's something about voices that are just creepy. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. But you've also got to remember, your the human brain has the nasty trick of just pulling stuff like that out of thin air sometimes. I remember yeah. one night I was living in, alone in this efficiency apartment. You know, so we're talking only like a, you know, like a 12 by 15 space apartment. And I heard the voice of one of my coworkers so clearly that I was like, well, Travis? What? Huh? What? What the hell? Obviously, he was not in, you know, standing at the end of my bed. But my brain had just decided it wanted to wake me up using this guy's voice. Like, what the hell was that going on? Okay, whatever. Yeah, I've woken up uh, in the middle of the night here at the new place. Um, Tyler and I joke that the place is haunted, but we're not, we don't necessarily really believe that. Mainly because every time we put a pencil down, like in our kitchen, we mm -hmm. never find that pencil again, ever. And the only thing I can say is we have cats. So maybe it's knocked under something. But I've recently had a guest come over and stay for like a month. And okay. they lost their Apple Pencil in the house. And we Ooh. never found it. Ever. As in like the Apple Pencil that comes with your iPod. iPad? Yeah, the iPad thing. Yeah, oh, one well, of those. Ouch. Yeah, $120 just gone and we don't know where it is. We've searched everywhere where he was. In the guest bedroom uh, in the living room, in the recliner. We checked in the recliner. We checked in the couch. We checked under the cabinets. We checked in cabinets. Like, we literally checked everywhere that it could possibly have fallen or been kicked somewhere. And it's it's just missing. It's just gone. Um, <laughs> so that's weird. Uh, but not necessarily a haunting. He probably dropped it outside somewhere. Or in my car. Because anything that goes in my car, I hope that you didn't get attached to it because it's gone now. Um, <laughs> so it's probably in my car. Um, but yeah, I remember I woke up, uh, in the middle of the night, very similarly to you. It wasn't someone that I knew. It wasn't a voice that I heard, but I heard a woman scream and I woke up. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like, uh, maybe you were having a nightmare and your brain just decided like, you don't need to have to be able to remember the rest of the nightmare, but hey, you know, we're going to bounce you out, bounce you out of bed anyhow for it. I, the weirdest thing, I cannot explain this, and I don't know what's wrong with my brain or maybe my body's trying to tell me something, but I basically only have nightmares. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't Ooh. have, and even if I have a dream that's not considered a night, a nightmare mm -hmm. itself... It's bizarre, it's weird, and it's not necessarily good. Like, I don't, I don't remember, if I have good dreams, I don't remember good dreams, ever. I just remember the bizarre and the terrible. <laughs> mm. 
Wow. Yeah. Um, ask Jess. She might be able to help you with that. I mean, yeah, to, so you... to be fair, I don't mind having nothing but nightmares because I write short stories, and if I can write it, I'll take... Okay, fair enough. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, see, it, I get, I have like maybe two or three nightmares a freaking year. You know, you would think I would have a lot more nightmares. No. The joke, the joke uh, with my family and with Jess is like, I get it all out on paper. You know, it's like nightmares. Yeah, that was, I don't have nightmares. I had, I drew one earlier this evening. Yeah, so there's no reason for you to have a nightmare. You yeah. just get it all out. Um, Judge Hitmore actually has another um, another story about, about the restaurant. I'm sorry. I'm going to try to read this while I'm hiccuping. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I swear I'm not drunk. Of um, course you're not. <laughs> I swear to Os officer, or what is it? I swear, I swear to you, drunk officer, I'm not God. <laughs> Or something something like, that. like that, yeah. Oh man, it's so funny. Um, anyway, um, I was uh, I was there overnight. Deep or nope, that's I read that one already. Jeez, my hiccups have made me lose where, where I am in the chat. <laughs> Another time, um, they were in the break room that's next to the creakiest stairs in the world. Heard someone, someone come down the stairs. No one came out of the bottom of the stairs, and when I went to look, there was no one there, and there's no way someone could have climbed those stairs sil silently. Mm. Okay. Much, le much less creepy when you're hiccuping all over the place. <laughs> so, basically, it was either a ghost or a ninja. Take your pick. Or the biggest spider in the world that stepped on a stair and then climbed up the wall the rest of the way. Spider goes. Spider goes. Yeah, there we go. The, Could you the imagine? The rest of them haunted by uh, Peter Parker. Could you imagine a, a ghost of a spider and how many people would freak out see, seeing that? Only if it was a big spider, because otherwise it's going to be like, okay, it's a spider, so what? Yep, that's true. You know. Like one of those giant camel spiders in the desert. Came back as a ghost. Man, those scare me anyway. I'm going to stop talking about th about this. We have a camel spiders? Yeah, like the... Have you never seen those? That doesn't even ring any bells. Oh, God. Man, I'm going to have... I'm going to have to find a picture later and show you. That's a thing of my nightmares. So basically, okay. it's like this giant spider. And the only thing... The only picture I've seen of them is like... They attach to the bottom of like a camel... And they basically leech and kill the camel slowly because they mm. they hook to the underside underside of them and mm. wrap their like giant legs around them and they're stuck there basically. I don't know if it's fake, but every picture I've seen just seems a little too real to be fake. <laughs> yeah, I have to admit I've never heard of a camel spider, so. And to be honest, uh, I don't know if they're. They're actually called camel spiders. That's just what I call them because I don't know their names. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Um, oh, Jess uh, asked you to tell tell the story from Gibsonburg. Oh, okay. Jess and I have a disagreement one on this one because this is the the haunted. I'm sorry. Okay, sorry. I thought I heard a second voice on the phone, on the uh, mic for a second there. Like, great. A ghost decided to manifest to uh, carry on the conversation here. So there is a tiny town near Bowling Green, Ohio, called Gibsonburg. And it has a bridge, you know, that leads into it. Not, nothing terribly unusual, you know, that's... I mean, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of little rivers and creeks in the Northwest Ohio area. Well, a persistent legend about 
in this area is of the headless motorcyclist. Uh, that supposedly during the 1950s, a veteran was coming home from the, his tour to the Civil War and he was on a motorcycle. Something happened as he was crossing this bridge into Gibsonburg. Uh, motorcycle went off the bridge. He was decapitated and the body was never found. And ever since on, it was like March 13th, hun? Something like that. If you go to the bridge and park, you will see a phantom headlight coming towards you and go straight through the car and keep on going. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of a classic, uh, local classic. And a lot of people really do believe in it. Now, I've researched in the folklore that the story of the headless motorcyclist is fairly common. I also researched a bit, and there's no record of a fatality of that sort happening in Gibsonburg ever. I mean, Gibsonburg is a town of what, like three, four thousand? So a horrible accident like that would definitely be remembered. Here's one thing that I do find is kind of strange. In an a uh, volume of the long-running Haunted Ohio book series, they interviewed a guy named, I don't remember the first one, I think it was Richard Gill, who actually did go out to the Gibsonburg and saw the, the light, it went through the, the, the car he was in, the whole nine yards. And I'm pretty sure I know the guy, know the guy's wife, and I'm and I'm good friends with his son. So this wasn't just some random, you know, friend of a friend kind of thing. It's like, wait a moment, that's your dad talking here. So I've never gotten around to going out and doing it. Because like I said, I find it kind of odd that there are no records of any fatal motorcycle accident. And also, if you start looking online, the story of the Honda motorcycle, the headless motorcycle, it's international. I think there's even one in India. It's kind of like the story of the uh, girl that uh, hit, is hitchhiking and, you know, gets a ride, yada, 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 you know, and when he, she's cold, so the driver offers her his um, jacket, she disappears. And he finds out that it was like the anniversary of her death or something like that. So, but it's really strange to, you know, read a story like that and realize that, like a moment, I know some of the people involved in this. Mm. Oh goodness. Uh so B Baffet uh in chat put in uh the camel spider uh information. It is called a camel spider in common. Its scientific name is uh, I'm going to butcher this. Uh, Galeotis Arabs. Uh, type is invertebrate. Diet is carnivore. And the average lifespan in the wild is up to one year. And it's six inches and weighs two ounces. Mm, six inches with the legs, yeah. correct? Yeah, so I guess six inches with the legs. But I swear I've seen one that was bigger than that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Well, it's not too hard to basically isolate an element and blow it up in Photoshop. No, that's true. Maybe that's what it was that I saw, but man, mm -hmm. oh man. Not a true spider. Uh, it doesn't have any webs. Huh. Well, if it's basically a parasite, why would it have webs? Yeah, but I'm also thinking, like, couldn't you consider, like, the, um, what are they, the dirt spiders? What are those spiders that dig into, they dig in the dirt and wait for prey instead of uh, tra setting... Trap, trap spiders? Yeah, trapping spiders, yeah. Because those things are, um, because those things, they don't really, they don't produce, well, they may produce webs, like, after they catch the thing, but they don't have, like, a web web. Mm-mm. But the, uh, what was it, um, that I saw, I just saw something in chat. Um, oh, trapdoor spiders make webs to make the trapdoor cover. Ah, oh. that's cool. I kind of thought they just hid in the, like, made a hole in the, in the dirt and kind of just, when there was a vibration on the outside. That's kind of cool. Mm. Oh, Lou L. Lou took spider biology in Purdue. That would explain why you know all this stuff about spiders. <laughs> that would do it, I suppose. Crazy. I didn't even... Who would have guessed that there would be a class on spider biology? Oh, I have a friend. I have an old co-worker that uh, specialized in... Uh, in college on, you know, insect biology. So it doesn't shock me too much. Plus, there's how many different gen uh, varieties of spiders out there? That's true. There are a lot. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um... I had a spider-related oh. story, and now I've forgotten it. Okay, hold on just a second, guys. Got to take a mental break. Uh, trying to maintain this level of detail with an illustration takes it to... Oh, boy. Well, why he, while he's taking a mental break, Luau Lu or B. Baffet, do you guys have any spooky, scary stories to tell us? Judge Hipmore recommends the Facebook group All Spiders Go to Kevin if you want to learn more about spiders and bugs. That's cool. To Kevin? To Kevin. <laughs> As in, like, the name. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> it's a really bad pun. And that's a really... Oh, God. Speaking of bad puns, actually, that was a great transition. <laughs> Let's pull one from the... Uh... Big box. Okay, here we go. You, you said Deep that box? at the same time as Jess redeemed a random Joker fact. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, those of you who passed third grade will... Are any of you in third grade? Because you'll probably find this funnier than hell. Uh, those of us who have, are older than third grade are you just, you know, prepare to cringe, okay? And I can't blame the, again, I can't, as I mentioned last week, I cannot blame these on my wife because I found all these on my own. Why do skeletons make good comedians? Because they're too humorous. Should I uh, do another one since Jess did a... Uh, Why not? Got... Okay, here we go, kids. Oh, hmm. okay, never mind. Statistical studies found that 50% of children prefer to receive chocolate on Halloween. The other 50% are weird little monsters. 
I'm uh-huh. one of those weird little monsters. I If there's, like, nerds or Laffy Taffy or, you know, sweet tarts in that candy bucket, I am taking those before I take, like, the chocolate candy bars. Okay, that's fine. That means there's more for me. Exactly. See, I'm thinking about the other 50% of the kids. Totally. Oh, yes. (laughs) (laughs) Self-sacrificing. Right. Luau Lu has a scary story. About 45 minutes away from his farm is an area called Jasper County, Indiana. Okay. And a road called Moody's Road. Moody's Road, okay. I need to know why they're called this. <laughs> okay, I take it he's still typing. Maybe. Okay. There's a legend about a farmer that lived there named Moody. Okay. Now so far, so story. good. Yeah, I'm liking the story. We're going to have to wait for more. What is the name of the one town outside of Salem, Ohio? Oh, yeah. Tell me if this is an, a uh, name that should be the title of a horror movie. Organ Grinder Road. Why is that the name of a road? I kid you not, but it is on in the hills outside the western edge of Salem, Ohio. And supposedly it is haunted by a an insane uh, and disfigured uh, organ grinder. So, yeah. But yeah, just the name Organ Grinder Road is enough to to give little kids nightmares, I swear. I kind of forgot that was an instrument. Mm-hmm. I forgot that that existed. My brain went straight to, like, somebody grinding up kidneys to make sausage or something. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> but the story was always that this guy basically didn't have a face. Ugh. Yeah. So I'm not the only weird person from the from that area of Ohio. You know, somebody came up with this and and actually believed it. Well, I mean, I can't really I can't really say too much because when you think about it, like how mu- how many stories of like local legends like the Jersey Devil or the Witch in the Woods or I don't know, even the Baba Yaga in the middle of the woods. It's just some weird people who were like, these people keep coming into my woods and bothering me, so I'm going to start making weird noises. And then local legends start forming. Yeah. I like to imagine that cryptids are real, but... I was going to say, the area of uh, Pennsylvania you live in is famous for its... uh... The number of uh, Sasquatches you supposedly have. Okay, I actually didn't know that about Mm -hmm. Pennsylvania. (laughs) As a matter of fact, I kid you not, my very first illustrating job for a uh, cryptids magazine called The Gate was about the Sasquatches of western Pennsylvania. Huh. Today I learned. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I'm going Sasquatch hunting sometime. (laughs) Okay, so we have the real uh, story of Moody's Road. So there was a legend about a farmer that lived there named Moody. He had a daughter who was abducted and killed. He went out, this sounds like a really bad limerick. He went out looking for her when uh, she turned up late uh, late coming home, and okay. he searched the road with his lantern, and f- to his horror, found her body minus its head. Ew. He continued to look for his daughter's head, and uh, f- uh, I guess you know, forever and ever, amen. And nowadays, mm-hmm. um, and he's seen this and 
can test it, testify to its reality. If you go to Moody's Road and flash your car lights, a lamp will appear about a mile up the road and float until it gets about 100 feet from your car. And that's what, where is, is that in Jackson, what? It's Jasper County, Indiana. Hmm. Not actually too terribly dissimilar to the uh, headless motorcycle story. In North Carolina, um, there's, I forget what the road's called, uh, De Devil's Hill? I, I want to say it's Devil's Hill. I forget what the road is that it's called. Mm -hmm. um, it was about an hour and a half, two hours away from where I grew up, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's one of those stories where if you if you put your car in park at the at the bottom at the bottom mm -hmm. of this hill, it'll actually roll up the hill behind you. Like it'll roll backwards up the hill. Mm. Um. People have said that if you put, like, uh, powdered sugar um, or flour or something on the front of your car, you'll actually see, like, handprints. But I've never tested it, so I don't know if it... I can't attest to any of that. I just know it exists in North Carolina. Mm hmm I think I've heard that story before, too. Wasn't there, like, supposedly a, uh, like, a school bus, like went off the road or something and killed all the kids in it something yeah. to that effect yeah it's some tragedy like that i think that's another one where you know there's a lot of stories like that well i mean the um the apparition the lady in white there's mm -hmm. hundreds upon hundreds of sightings of the lady in white and oh, obviously God. the lady in white is like not the same person in every town but there's multiple different versions of her throughout different cultures and different. Oh states. hell, I think I think there's even a lady in white and bowling green. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I believe in a house on North Maple Street is supposedly haunted by a lady in white. Yeah, they say that Lavinia, going back to South Carolina, they say that Lavinia Fisher um, also goes up to. Um, she's she's seen in the old county jail in south carolina uh outside of a jail cell and she'll uh she'll appear as a lady in white hmm. jess just said uh she's the green lady in bowling green is oh the green thinking. lady i'm sorry hey i'm colorblind what can i say but yeah yeah there's a, uh but the house is on north maple i remember that much Supposedly, she is not a very nice ghost. I've never really tested the uh, story too much. Ooh, Luau Lu has a story coming from my state. Uh, in the Laurel Caverns, uh, there's a railing that goes down into the cave, and if you, if you put a ball on it, it, uh, it will appear to roll upwards. Hmm. I didn't know that about Laurel Caverns. I have been told that uh, it's really it's a neat place to go. Hmm. <laughs> Grape Ape is wondering uh, if you're wearing your Halloween costume. Um, no. <laughs> I'm thinking of the, that age where it's like Halloween is kind of like a. You know, kind of a, yeah, whatever. I you know. I ended up wearing a Hall my Halloween costume to school. <laughs> I had to go to school today. You get to see me in my Halloween costume. <laughs> nope. Now, if we had kids, oh yeah, how I'd be doing. I would definitely have a Halloween costume on, but with Nerioni Little McDevitts running around terrorizing everyone, 
it's just not quite as much fun, you know? Yeah. Luau said he saw a uh, really good simple costume uh, dressed up, someone dressed up in a yellow rain jacket, galoshes and a red balloon to be Georgie from It that'd be a nice easy one So, Grape Ape, now that you're here, do you have any spooky stories? Ooh. Oh, that sounds encouraging. Do tell, do tell. Share with the class, Grape Ape. No, oh, while we're waiting for Grey Babe, um, don't forget, folks. Uh, there will not be a show next week because we're having the what the Mike, the Ma of Mike with the Manly Mike Curtis, but we will be back the week after that so that would be what the eighth sound about right yeah same bad time same bad channel uh i'm not sure what we're going to be talking about but it is kind of fun to have a topic of the day okay oh, okay. oh go ahead are we ready? Yes, but I have to ask a question because my brain stopped working. Okay. Um, IA, the abbreviation, is Indiana, right? Iowa, I think. Okay. Um, so, Grape Ape, Iowa. Okay, yeah, y'all are right. I, my brain doesn't work very well because, like, I think of the journalism way to, like, shorten things. So, with, like, if Pennsylvania is P-E-N-N, it, so on and so forth. Mm, okay. uh, so I I just don't remember the abbreviations for states. <laughs> um, so Grape Ape was uh, says that his story was in Garden Grove, Iowa, a tiny farm town about like 500 people. His whole family on his mom's side was there for a family reunion and playing games, eating, etc. all throughout the day. Right. Once it got dark, everyone started telling ghost stories and it ex... At exactly midnight on the dot, the street lights went out and the wind kicked up into this crazy out of nowhere storm. Everyone hmm. freaked out and it was like, and was like ten. Uh, he was like ten. So <laughs> that's that's crazy. Yeah, that would be kind of like okay, guys. Uh, I think somebody is trying to send us a message. I don't think it's a message we really want to get. Yeah. Apparently, there were no weather warnings at all on the news for this windstorm, so it just kind of happened. So he was like, I'm pretty sure it was spirits. <laughs> oh. Definitely strange.
<laughs> Apparently his uncles also kept it up and chased everyone around the house. <laughs> of course. Because uh, you have to have at least one crazy uncle. Oh, Grape Ape, uh, Grape Ape said that that's the most real unexplained instance he's ever had, except for the music box that was on his fridge. Um, okay. And he, if you want to know that story, I believe, yeah, we, we spoke about that on last week when we were talking about spooky things. So, like, when his mother, uh, it was your mother correct that passed away grape ape um there was this music box on the fridge um that played started playing on its own like i believe the week after uh his mother passed away do, 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 do. six months after and had never been touched since it was on the fridge right it was just kind of like the part of the landscape of the fridge at that point Mm. That would definitely creep me out, kids. Mm. Oh, I have a good story from when I was in middle school that I just thought about because of the music box thing. So, okay. my middle school is really freaking old. Uh, it's Coyer Life Middle School in Landis, Landis, North Carolina. Okay. And it's, like, notorious in North Carolina, one of the top, like, ten most haunted places in the oh, state. What's the name of the place again? Coyer Life Middle School. I think I've actually heard about it on uh, one or two of the uh, YouTube uh, uh, haunting stories I've I've heard. Go yeah, on. Yeah, it's like, I don't remember all of the ghosts, but I remember I really didn't like going there or being in the hallways by myself, which I found myself in sometimes. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so we actually, the, the stories that I've heard uh, range from, you know, headless ghost in the, uh, in the, auditorium to haunted boiler room that's not really a boiler room like the entrance to this said boiler room is there but none of us believe that it's actually a boiler a boiler room in there and if it is it's locked up and even the janitors don't go in there so i don't know what hey. i don't know anything about it we just know that the entrance is there on the way to like the science labs <laughs> but um so we i was in <sighs> I think I was in like sixth or seventh grade. Um, okay. It was the year, it was the start of the school year after a one of our football players that was an eighth grader uh, passed away from cardiac arrest. Um, mm. Very, very, very young. He had, I believe he had already had some underlying heart issues um, anyway, and like just strenuous exercise kind of mm. tipped it over the edge, I believe. If, if I remember correctly what happened to him. Okay, go on. But um, he, I remember I was in the hallway. I have never met this guy. Never okay. seen him. Only seen his pictures. Um, I was in the hallway and I, I was in seventh grade because I remember I was in the, because each level of school has its own section of the, mm -hmm. of the middle school and all of their like lockers are there. So... I was in the seventh grade hallway going to my locker because I forgot my textbook like an idiot. So I get to my locker and I heard footsteps. Now, if any of you people know anything about middle school, you're not allowed to be in the hallway by yourself. And pretty no. much teachers don't roam around, at least this, at least from what I could tell. Like, you never saw a teacher walking around during class time because the teachers were all teaching pretty much right. at that time. So you never saw teachers, you didn't see other students, and if you did see other students, they were, like, going to the bathroom and going right back. And 
I was in the middle of the hallway, like, where my locker was, and about ten feet away from me was the, like, exit of this long hallway to where the auditorium and art classroom and choir and band okay. classrooms were. So, big open space. Very bright, middle of the day. And I, like, hear these footsteps, and I'm like, ah, crap. If that's a teacher, they're going to be mad at me, and they're going to ask me, like, where's my hall pass? Did someone give you permission to go out here? I'm, like, going through all these thoughts, like, I'm going to get in trouble just for getting a textbook out of my locker. Right. I look over to that hallway that I'm hearing these footsteps from. Nobody's there except for a shadow about this height of an eighth grader, same build, same, like, head structure. Like, I could kind of see his face. It looked very, very similar to the pictures I had seen of this, like, football player that passed away. Right. And it waves at me. And I, like, I'm staring. I'm just staring at it. And I blink, like, a couple of times, like, what the heck am I looking at here? And then it just disappears. It just fades out. Well, at least it was a... So it was basically Casper the Friendly Jock Ghost. Yeah, seriously! I've never heard of a ghost that's like, Hi there! Yeah, no, it literally just waved at me, and then just, it was gone. As soon, like, as soon as it came up, it was gone. Okay. I closed my locker with a slam and, like, ran back to the classroom. Ah, uh, yeah. That would be strange, yes. But yeah, I, I don't think I've ever heard... A single story of a ghost that like actually acknowledged the presence of the people like in that uh mundane of a fashion yeah most of the time ghosts just stare at me yeah oh I have a feeling I have a long night ahead of me. What do you think, folks? Yeah. This is almost worse than the heads. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, Luau Lu has another, um, has another story. His okay. mother... Uh, who was normal, an average person by all means, had two months back uh, in, like, 1984 where she had a super visit, she would have super vivid dreams about relatives being dead, would mm. wake up, call her grandmother only to be reassured that they were fine, and then within days they would pass away. Yee. <laughs> Apparently his grandmother said, <laughs> his grandmother instructed her to stop telling her about these dreams. <laughs> It happened about three or four times. I'm sorry, it's not funny that these people passed away, but it's kind of it's kind of funny the idea of just stop talking about it because I think that's what it is. Yeah, really. Those kind of dreams are, like, no joke, though, that seem like premonitions in a way. I've mm -hmm. had I've had uh, dreams when I was a kid. I would wake up, and I vaguely remember them, and I, mm -hmm. I chalked it up when I was younger, um, like, because I got these when I was in middle school, so I was like, I chalked it up to just my brain, because mm -hmm. I would watch, I would watch on TV, like, 80s horror movies that would pop on and you know they're safe for they're safe for tv they've cut out most of the crap but like there were right. still parts that were genuinely creepy that would creep out mm -hmm. a you know i don't know six six to eight year old person so right. i would think in middle school like okay those manifested into these dreams well the only way i can describe waking up is like yeah. having this lump in my throat like i couldn't like I could breathe, but it was hard to breathe. Like, I was mm. choking on a lot of spit. But it was it was also, like, a taste that I just, as a kid, was just like, this has to be what it tastes like when you're dead in a coffin. Like, that's just what mm. this has to taste like. And it would freak me out because I'd just see, like, flashes. I don't, I would, I can't remember the, the first part of the dream, but I remember very vividly it would be, like, red 
You know how, like, when you look at something uh, really bright with your eyes closed, like, the mm-hmm. eyelids are, like, really red? Yeah, because you're seeing it basically through the blood vessels. Be- you're actually seeing stuff through the blood vessels in, in the eyelids. Yeah, so th- it was, like, that color, which, like, as an adult now, probably is because I was turned and looking at my lamp that was on at night because I used to read going to bed. Right. So I probably was seeing that in my dream and it was manifesting, but I'd see like flashes of faces of people I had no idea who they were at all. Mm. I'd never seen these people, don't know their names. I thought that it was just mumbo jumbo, but when I was in high school, I went, I was going to church with my parents mm-hmm. and we had a guest preacher come in, tell his story about his son who, uh, who was dramatically affected by a car crash um and suffered some pretty bad brain damage Mm. and i looked and like i'm not kidding this guy had the accident because this was probably about five six years after i'd had those dreams he had had that accident four years prior and Mm. his face was one of the faces that i knew from Mm. that dream and it was so creepy because I kept staring at him because I sang in the choir and I was like trying not to be weird about it. But I kept like looking at him in the choir and I'm like, I've seen that face. I've seen that face before. Where have I seen that face before? And it turned out it was because of it, it was that dream that I had had. And I have no explanation for it. But that was the weirdest dream I've ever. That's like the weirdest dream experience I've ever had. And Lou Lou's mother's story just reminded me of that. That's like so mm. weird. Yeah. I don't know. Um, And I am not enough of a psychologist to really offer any sort of, you know, even potentially valid explanation. Yeah. I mean, the only thing I could think of as a, as an, as a more rational adult (laughs) and if I take away what I believe in from the supernatural, because I am a believer in the supernatural, right? maybe his face was just generic enough that my brain came up with it and I thought I recognized him. But at mm-hmm. the same time, like, I have no explanation for why I would wake up, like, with a, like, a lump in my throat, feeling like, you know, I was buried alive and dying. <laughs> it was, like, the weirdest. Uh, that's the weird part to me. Yeah. That I cannot under explain. Yeah. Um, Judge Hipmore has redeemed a random Joker fact. Okay, give me just one second to finish this last little bit right here. Oh, what time is it, anyhow? Uh, oh. 15 minutes till. Okay. Mm. Come on, sheesh. Oh, this is just awful. Okay, I don't remember this one, so I'm thinking that Jess found it. But what (laughs) is the cutest of all the seasons? Ah, Tom. (laughs) Oh, that one's bad. That one's worth a rip. I'll give that one. Yep. Yep. So, since you're working on wood grains, uh, Luau Lu is curious, do you have any method or tips for doing, like, wood grain? Um, do a lot of really short and very, try, try to make them pretty random stuff and vary the line weight, like here. And don't forget to include the occasional, like, knot, which I had actually been forgetting to do so far in this illustration. Um, As always, the best thing is to have some photo reference on hand, even if you don't actually, like, quote, unquote, actually use the photo reference uh, exactly, it will usually kind of give you, 
kind of nudge you in the direct the right direction. Um, almost any natural object like this or waves or water or clouds, um, it's best to have some sort of photo reference available. Um, now, sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't. Sometimes it's a, simply a matter of I don't have time to go looking for the, for the photo reference that maybe would work best. But also, you know, and I'm not trying to sound arrogant, I've been at this a long time. A lot of this stuff is just kind of like imprinted in my brain. So Judge Hitmore has another story about the haunted restaurant. Okay. Um, yeah. So there Judge, was... if we ever get out back now, is this in Goshen? In Goshen? Yeah, that's the name of the town she lives in. Oh, I don't know. You know, because I'm always up for a uh, to go to a haunted restaurant. Better be some really good food. <laughs> um. So apparently at this restaurant, there is a big gas oven, um, and uh, they had seen the door slam open because the gas would build up inside and then light, but one day okay. they watched it slowly open like someone took a pie out, paused at the bottom, and then slowly close it. Okay. That would be odd. That was in Plain City, Ohio, where they grew up, and it's a junk shop now. Oh. Sad. Great. I'd love to know if there's any stories at the junk shop. <laughs> yeah. The Haunted Dollar Tree. What a concept. Ooh. Ooh. It's a, ooh, brother. Do we have to haunt this stuff? Oh, man. It's like creepy dolls. I hate dolls at antique shops. Yeah, but somehow I think that, you know, if you're going to have a good haunted doll, it's going to have to cost more than a dollar and be made in China. Yeah. You yeah. Know. And that, that just takes most of the fun out of a, of a haunted doll right there. Yeah, I... I ugh. Oh, oh, look, it, it is not Chucky, it is Chicky. <laughs> I'm just thinking about this porcelain doll uh, mm -hmm. that my grandmother has, and it creeps me the heck out. And I'm, I don't know why, maybe some of my nightmares stemmed from this one doll that my mother had when she was growing up, and then she mm -hmm. passed it down to me, as like, when I was a kid. So I had, like, this little, like, baby crib that was... It was an obvious, like, playset baby crib. And, right. like, my mother had painted uh, baby Minnie on it, you know, making it look all cutesy, right? Mm -hmm. And I had this big, big doll. It was, like, I, I can't explain it, but it, I swear it's as wide as I am. Like, if any of you guys have seen me in person, it is, like, the width of this thing is as wide as I am. It was a big, giant baby doll. And its hair... Because my mother, I did this to my Barbie, so I can't blame her. But, like, my mother cut its hair when when she was growing up. So it has this really nasty, like, bowl cut that's super uneven, which added to the creep factor. And it was, like, when you picked it up, like, it didn't even have any clothes. This is the funny thing. So it had, like, these, like, weird, I won't say they're porcelain, but they didn't feel like plastic either. Like, there there were, like, these heavy limbs on it, but it was just a potato sack body. And it made <laughs> it extra creepy. I'm trying to figure out now, like, why did I keep that in my room? Why didn't I tell my parents to get rid of it? Because I'm pretty sure that's the source of most of my nightmares. <laughs> so no Annabelle-type dolls? 
Uh, no, I never had a Raggedy Ann, um, mainly because I knew about Annabelle when I was young, and oh. I refused to have a Raggedy Ann. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure I gave my Raggedy Ann to my mother, or my, <laughs> I either gave it to my mother or I gave it to my grandmother, because I did not want it in my room. I was like, it is very cute, but I know what Annabelle is, and I don't like it. Hmm. See, I um, grew up before Annabelle was, uh really a part of the uh, pop culture but i remember reading actually some of the uh, old raggedy ann and eddie novels as a kid and some of those were it's like whoa what the hell kids they were a lot creepier than the than any uh you know novel involving two rag dolls should have any right to be yeah well it's like you've you i i assume you've seen scary stories to tell in the dark like the books Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, like, I I ended up trying to read that when I was little, and I would make the mistake because I loved reading in the dark, and I or not in the dark, but at night. Like, I would read a book going to bed. Like, I would mm -hmm. read several chapters at a time. Well, I made the mistake. Uh, I, I don't remember if I picked it out at the bookstore or if I got it as a gift or something, but I remember reading scary stories to tell in the dark at night, as a kid, and I hate myself for it because those still haunt me in the in my dreams. Like those images that they oh, that really? they put in there. Yeah, those images still come up in my nightmares sometimes because they're so ingrained as a piece of fear. And I got to the point where it creeped me out so badly. I would have the book I had a bookshelf in in my room and I had the book in the bookshelf. I couldn't see the cover art, which is that really creepy ghost lady. I couldn't mm -hmm. see the cover art, but just the fact that it was in my room scared me so bad that in the middle of the night, I took that book, ran all the way across the house, like, turning on every light on my way. I'm surprised I didn't wake up my parents. I uh. slammed it in their bookshelf that was in, like, this hallway. I slammed it in the bookshelf and ran back to my room flipping off all the lights. It like those stories scared me that bad as a kid and I never read it again. And now I'm like, mm -hmm. where is that book? I told I told my parents, I'm like, I wanna know where you put that book. Like, did you sell it? Did you like lose it? What happened to it? Because now I wanna read it as an adult because they don't scare right. me that bad. Right. Huh. Yeah, see, I mean, with having three older brothers who were all bookworms and all comic book geeks. I mean, I was reading, I was getting the scary stuff basically what I think when I was still in the crib. You know. Plus, uh, Jess can testify to this because I've told her. The uh, library that was around the corner from my house had the best selection of weird books down in the children's section. You know, I mean, it had, like, Daniel Cohen's, uh, all his folklore books. It had, like, a version of Beowulf. And it was, like, so I'm, like, nine years old reading the folklore about vampires and werewolves and so on and so forth. It's like, oh, this is really cool stuff. Do, 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 do. I should probably be scared silly by reading this, but, it, you know, crazy. Okay, folks, it is about that time. So I hope you have enjoyed yourselves. Thank you, all of you who chose to share your ghost stories with us. I hope it made uh, this Halloween session of In the Studio with Brad more entertaining. Ah. I have an errand or two that I need to take care of. And then I have a feeling I'm going to be making myself a pot of coffee and pulling the late nighter tonight. So, folks, happy Halloween. Uh, and we shall see you in two weeks. And I do believe we are five, four, three, two, one, and out of here.